All right, so in this video, we go over section 6.6, .6, which is logarithmic and exponential equation. So in this case, we are going to solve equations that look like this one. So just like a mini, mini review, uh, let's go over all the different techniques that we use to solve equations. For example, if I have 3x plus 5, oh, I mean, just 3x, equals 9. So in order to solve this equation, we need to, for x, we need to do the inverse of the operation of the, with the number that we have in here. In this case, the 3. So the 3 is multiplying the x. We need to do the inverse, which is divide. All right? So that's what we do. If we have something like x, x plus 5 equals 10, so we have x adding with 5, so we need to do the inverse of adding the 5, which is to subtract the 5. That's going to give us x equals 5. If we have something like the cube root of x equals 4, well, so if we want to isolate the x, we need to get rid of the, of the, we need to get rid of the cube root by cubing both sides. So. 4 cube, okay, and uh, this is going to be uh, 4 cube, which is 64, I believe. 4 times 4, 60 times 4, yes, 64. Right, so these are some of the uh, techniques that we use to solve equations. Now we're going to use the properties of inverse. Uh, of the inversibility between logarithms and exponential in order to solve exponential equations first. So we do exponential equations first. Okay, so every time we solve an exponential equation, we want to make sure that the exponential term is by itself. So we need to move these two to the other side and we need to get rid of that three that is multiplying the exponential. In order to do that, I will subtract 2 from both sides. That's going to give me 3e to the 4x equals 9. And then in order to get the exponential by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That's going to give me e to the 4x equals to 3. All right. So now, okay, let me write this again. e to the 4x equals, I'm going to leave some space. In this case, we are going to use the property that we need to recall here. So uh, when we take the log on the base of the same as the base of the exponential, these two guys cancel and we are left only with x as we can see here. So in this case, I have the exponential base e. The inverse of taking the exponential base e is to take ln to both sides of the equation. This way, this, um, this cancel, this go away, and we get 4x equals ln of 3. And finally, to get x by itself, divide both sides by 4. So x will be, you might want to write this in a different way, like 1 fourth ln of 3, all right? And well, uh, sometimes, well, depending on the instructions on my MATLAB or on the quiz or the exam, well, here I wrote um, approximate to the nearest 10. I'm going to change this and approximate, rather, approximate to four decimal places. Okay, so I'm going to use a calculator. If you use a calculator, you should get approximately 0 0.2747. So when you do the homework, they will ask you for the exact and the approximate. So let's uh, label them exact and approximate. Okay, so let's do another example. Well, for letter B, uh, notice how um, uh, the exponential 
term it's already by itself okay so there's two there's a few ways you could solve this equation okay one way is to apply the log base 2 to cancel the exponential and the logarithm and leave us with the power however if we do that let me show you on a different paper so I have 2 to the x plus 1 equals 80. If I take log base 2 to both sides boom boom x plus 1 equals uh, well I'm gonna have log base 2 of 80 and then boom 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 minus 1 alright however this is gonna be a little bit weird to read because if you have log 80 on the base 2 it, it might be a little bit troublesome to work with you will have to use the change of base formula I mean unless you want to do it using the change of base formula that's fine you can take this approach however I'm gonna take a different approach when solving this equation so what I will do here is okay, first of all let me rewrite the equation to to the x plus 1 equals 80 so what I will do is take log, just log the common log, which is log base 10. Al alternatively, you can take ln. You should get the same either way. And then what am I going to do here is I will have this exponent of the 2 to smack down. All right, smack down that x plus 1 times log base, I mean log of 2 equals log of 80. All right. So the next move is to um, divide both sides by log base 2. I mean log of 2, not log base 2, log of 2. It is 0 here. And this will give us x plus 1 equals log of 80 divided by log of 2 and all we need is to subtract 1 to get x equals log of 80 over log of 2 e minus 1 so this is the exact answer now we need an approximate answer so in this case using a calculator I get um, 5.3219 now if you compare with what with the, with the other approach without using log with uh, actually using log base 2 well it this would fall would be followed by using the change of base formula so that's why what I want to show you here is that this regardless of the approach to take you should get to equivalent forms in here okay so final answer here now let's move to the next example let's see so now we have pi e to the pi x minus e equals 666 all right so let's see so in this case again you can take log base pi on both sides however I'm going to do it the other way around. So I'm going to write the equation again. Pi to the pi x minus e equals 666. And I'm going to take ln to both sides. So notice I'm using ln in this case as opposed to the previous example in which I used log. Does it matter? No, does it, it doesn't matter. As long as you use both lns and you apply the same base of the ln, you should get the same um, the same result. So uh, the next move is to have this guy smack down, put it in the front. Okay, so this is going to be pi x minus e times ln of pi equals ln of 666. So the next move is to 
Now solve for x. So first I'm going to divide both sides by ln of pi. And that's going to give me, I'm going to get cancelled. And I get pi x equals ln of 666 over ln of pi by x minus e, by the way. So I'm going to add, add e to both sides of the equation to get pi x equals ln of 666 ln of pi plus e. And last but not least, all we do is divide both sides of the equation by pi. Okay, this is going to be weird looking the division by pi here. However, dividing by pi is the same as multiplying by 1 over pi. And that multiplies ln of 666 over ln of pi plus e. And that's x. So that's the exact answer. The approximate answer will be 2.6730. We're rounding to four decimal places. This is our final answer here. Okay, so let's see. Letter D, so we are going to have a very similar situation. You might remember the equations that we solved in, in section 6.3, I believe it was, where we cover uh, ec basic exponential equations. You might, let, let me just do a really basic example, like, uh, I don't know, 16 to the x equals 4. Okay, so the idea was to write 4 to the 2, which is 16 times x equals 4, and then multiply the powers, we get 4 to the 2x equals 4. All right, and then because we have the same base, this is the same as 4 over 1, 4 to the 1, boom, boom, this cancel, 2x equals 1, and x equals 1 half. All right, however, it's not always possible to write um, equations, I mean the exponential terms of the of the exponential equations as bases of the same base actually, which is unfortunately one of these cases. So in that case, well, all we do is take a ln uh, to both sides or log, either way. I'm going to do a ln. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to do a ln. So... I'm going to take a ln, a ln, and I'm going to raise this little thing right here. And the, I'm going to smack down these two guys right here, smack down the 2x, smack down the 1 over the 1 minus x, 2x times ln of 4 equals 1 minus x times ln of 3. All right, so the next move, well, we want to isolate the x. We want to have all x's on the left-hand side. In order to do that, well, first I'm going to distribute this ln of 3 minus x times ln of 3. The left-hand side remains the same. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move all terms that have the x to the left hand side. In order to do that, I'm going to add x ln of 3 to both sides of the equation to get 2x ln of 4 plus x ln of 3 equals ln of 3. So the reason for which we send all terms that have the x to the left hand side is because that's going to be our GCF. So I'm going to factor x. It's going to be 2 ln of 4 plus ln of 3. 
equals ln of 3. So we divide both sides by this huge expression to ln of 4 plus ln of 3. All right, and we can cancel these guys right here. Boom, boom, and we get x equals this whole quantity to ln of 4 plus ln of 3, all under ln of 3. All right, so again, this is going to be our exact solution. We need an approximate solution. Using a calculator, you should get 0.2838. All right. Okay, just to show you how do we put this on the graphing calculator. Well, so let's see. Um, first, I'm gonna I'm going to type the ln, ln of three. I'm going to be sure to close parentheses for the argument and then divide by. Now, in this case, the tricky part is that we have a sum of terms in the denominator of this expression. So open parentheses to make sure that everything you type in the denominator or after the diagonal that denotes the division remains in the denominator. So this is going to be 2 ln of 4 close parentheses plus ln of 3. Close parentheses for the argument and then close parentheses for the entire denominator. And that's how I get that approximate answer. Okay. okay. Let's move on to the next topic, which is solving logarithmic equations. So now we are going to have equations that have a logarithmic, uh, a logarithmic term, and we need to do the inverse of the logarithmic of the logarithm, which is to exponentiate both sides. Notice how in the previous examples in order to get rid of the exponential we took logarithms on both sides. Here in order to get the logarithms undone is by exponentiating both sides. However, just like the previous uh, type of equations we need to isolate the logarithmic terms just the same way we um, we isolated the logger the exponential term so in this case we see a 3 in there what I'm gonna do I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get log of x equals 12 over 3 which equals 4 okay so now we are only one step away to get x by itself how do we do that well we need to do what we call to exponentiate base in this case what is the base of this logarithm so if you recall when we see the word log by itself and no subscript in between no subscript here underneath the letter g between the letter g and the argument it should be understood that the base is 10 so we exponentiate both sides base 10 so what's going to happen here? Uh, cancel logarithm with exponential, which is essentially what we're doing here. Cancel exponential with logarithm to get x by itself. All right, so we get x equals 10 to the fourth, which is 10,000. So, well, in this case, no, no decimal. And maybe how about the next one for letter B notice how the logarithmic term is already by itself so all we do is to exponentiate both sides and just the way we exponentiated base 10 on the previous example here we're going to exponentiate the base of this log recall the ln which is the natural log means that we, we would exponentiate both sides base e cancel cancel 8x equals e to the 7.4 and finally divide both sides by 8 and 
x equals 1 eighth e to the 7.4. Final answer. That's some sort of the exact answer. However, we need an approximation here as well, which in this case is I have 204.4981. All right. Then we have another one. Okay, so we have log base 2 of x minus 3 equals 4. In order to get rid of this log base 2, we need to do the inverse of the logarithm base 2, which is to exponentiate, but not base e or base term or base 10 like we did before, but rather base 2. So 2 to the log, 2 to the log cancelled, and we evaluate 2 to the fourth power which in this case is 16 and x minus 3 all right and all we do here is to add 3 to both sides 16 plus 3 equals 19 final answer all right so let's see what's next so the following equations, the equations in the following page are in the following pages are going to be a little bit more elaborated uh, as opposed to the ones that we have uh, used because in these equations we are going to put a lot of stuff that we have covered before and put it put it thing together. For example, uh, notice in the left hand side of this equation you have a sum of two logarithms. All right, so what does that remind you? So that reminds us to use the properties of log, so which I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write uh, above. So log of m plus log of n, that's gonna give us one single log of the following, of just the product m times n. All right, so that's what, I'm, what we're going to do here. We are going to, um, we're going to combine these two logarithms into a single one, all right? So in this case, I'm gonna have only one, one log of x plus three times x minus four equals log of eight. So now we need to get rid of those logarithms. Notice the base of the log. It's an indivisible number. That means it's base 10. I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna write it just so you can see it. So we need to undo this log by exponentiating both sides with the same base. But the, the good thing right here, no more logs will appear. In fact, this will turn into simply a quadratic equation x plus 3 times x minus 4 equals to 8. So this is going to be, I'm going to foil this, x times x, that's x squared. x times negative 4, negative 4x. 3 times x, that's uh, 3x. 3 times negative 4, that's uh, minus 12, equals 8. So in this case, we are going to combine like terms x squared min minus x and then minus 12 equals 8. All right, so all we need to do now is to subtract 8 from both sides. That's going to give us x squared minus x minus 20 equals to this 0, and then from there, we are going to solve this equation by factoring. So, and the good thing, the good news here is equation is nicely factorable because factors of negative 20 that add up to negative 1 are negative 5 and 4 which means using the zero product property that x equals 5 and x equals negative 4 all right so hmm, let's see in this case we obtained two solutions so notice the instructions that we have here Verify for extraneous solutions. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, uh, we are going to check 
x equals 5 on the original equation. So I'm going to write log of 5 plus 3 plus log of 5 minus 4. Is that equal to log of 8? That's the question. Okay, so 5 and 5. So let's simplify the arguments of each single logarithm here. So I'm going to have log 5 plus 3, that's log of 8, plus log of 5 minus 4, which is log of 1. Is that equal to log of 8? Well, let's find out. So the something we, we know here is that log of 1, regardless of the base, that's a 0. So this is going to yield the following, log of 8 plus 0 equals log of 8. And log of 8 plus 0 is simply log of 8. So x equals 5 is so far an OK solution. Now let's find out whether negative 4 is an OK solution. And you will see something weird here. Right. So log of negative 4 plus 3 plus log of negative 4 minus 4. Okay. Log of 8. And we're going to plug in the number negative 4. Negative 4. And there's something weird that is going to happen here because we're going to have log of negative 1 plus log of negative 8 is that equal to log of 8? In the first place this is mathematical baloney because we cannot evaluate logarithms uh, logarithmic functions to negative numbers so let's write that as a note here um, Remember that the domain of the logarithm or the logarithmic function is only the set of all positive numbers. Recall that the logarithmic functions cannot, for logarithmic function, we cannot input the zero or we cannot input negative numbers. Okay, so let's recall that the domain logarithmic function excludes negative numbers. All right, so this guy right here is not going to be a solution. In fact, this will go, this will be uh, an extraneous solution. All right. So the only legitimate solution is x equals 5, which I'd better highlight so you can actually see it. So I'm going to highlight it. Let's highlight it. All right. So let's let's solve another equation here. Huh? This is our very, very common homework exercises, common um, uh, exam questions, you know, equations that are written in quadratic form. And you might remember this from chapter one when we cover uh, those, when we did those use substitutions. Okay, so one thing I, we need to recall first of all is that when we have uh, this law of exponents, when we have the law of exponents which establishes that we, when a to the mn that equals to either a to the m and outside the n or um, a to the n and outside the m. Either way, you can interchange these two. And again, that comes from the commutativity of the multiplication. Another law of exponents that we are going to use in the next example is that 
one that tells us that a to the m plus n equals a to the m times a to the n. So these two are going to come into play. So I'm going to work with this first one with the, on the first term of the equation. So 3 to the x, 3 to the 2x. Well, actually, let me let me work with the second term first. So in this case, 3 to the x plus 1 is the same as saying 3 to the x times 3 to the first power. And this is 3 to the 2x. And well, this 3 to the first power can be written as simply 3, which, by the way, it will be only the coefficient of this exponential term. Now, this is the part in which I will send this 2 outside of the parentheses. The reason why I chose to send this guy um, uh, outside, the, send this number 2 rather outside of the parentheses is because if we highlight this, this will work as the use substitution that I was talking about a few seconds ago. So in this case, I'm going to turn, I'm going to send this equation to the world of u. Write the equation in the world of u, solve it in the world of u. And then go back to the world of x. So, this is ugly looking equation, this exponential equation became a polynomial equation which is nicely factorable by the way because factors of negative 4 that add up to 3 are 4 and 1. So this means that u equals negative 4 and u equals 1. Okay, but in this case, notice that we solve the equation in the world of u. So first of all, we need to go back and substitute for x. So this will give rise to the two equations here. 3 to the x equals negative 4 and 3 to the x equals 1. All right. Now, how are we going to solve these two equations? Well, I'm going to take log to both sides of this, of each of these two equations. Okay, so this is equals to, so I'm going to take log and log. Okay, so I'm going to smack down this x right here to get x log of 3 equals log of negative 4. But by the way, if you if you recall from the previous example, we cannot evaluate logs of negative numbers, so nothing will come out of here. Now we're going to take this equation right here, all right, and we're going to do the following, let's say. So I'm going to take log and log. So we are going to have x log of 3 equals log of 1, which by the way is 0. Recall that log of 1, regardless of the base, that's a 0. And then divide both sides by log of 3 to get x equals 0 divided by any number, that's a 0, which is the only solution to this equation. Alright, let's do another example, which is a little bit similar, but with some uh, very interesting differences as opposed to the previous example that we just finished. So we have the equation 16 to the x plus 4 to the x plus 1 and minus 3. So number 1. These two equations are similar in the second term, in the middle term, because they have the x plus 1 term. We're going to do something similar as what we did here. However, the difference 
between equation in letter C and equation in B is the basis because we have the same base 3 and 3 in this case we have 16 and 4 this guy has the 2x as a power this one doesn't have a 2x so we are going to work with this term to make it look something like this and then they will have both the same base and they will have a quadratic pattern so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to write this 16 to the x as 4 squared to the x power and that's a plus 4 to the x times 4 to the first minus 3 equals to 0 alright now recall that in this case from the previous uh, law of exponents these two can, in, can be interchanged alright and the reason for which I will interchange this is because I need the, uh, the two outside as a power and the x inside to recognize the quadratic pattern so 4 to the x squared plus 4 times 4 to the x minus 3 equals to 0 and again I'm gonna call for another u substitution u equals 4 to the x alright 4 to the x so let's see what are we going to obtain in here so I'm gonna rewrite this equation as u squared plus 4 u minus 3 equals to 0 okay so solving this equation for u in this case if we try to solve this by factoring it's not going to work because there are no factors of negative 3 that add up to 4 so unfortunately we're gonna we'll have to recur to other kinds of methods. In particular, a method that comes to my mind is using the quadratic formula u equals minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Alright, so u equals minus 4, which is, well, I want to label this, uh, a is 1, b is 4 and c is negative 3 okay let me circle them so you can actually relate them easily so minus 4 plus minus the square root of uh, 4 square minus 4 times 1 times c which is negative 3 and divided by 2 times a which is 2 times 1 And then I'm going to continue up here. So I'm going to have u equals negative 4 plus minus, um, let's see, square root of 4 squared, which is 16. 16 negative times a negative is positive. I'm going to have 16 plus 4 times 3, that's 12. which equal uh, divided by 2 and that equals negative 4 and 16 plus 12 that's going to give me 28 plus minus the square root of 28 divided by 2 and then the, the next step here is to simplify this radical because this right we need to we need, in order to s simplify this radical we need to determine whether any of the factors of 28 is a perfect square and if you factor the number 28 this is 4 times 7 and recall the property of radicals that when you have the square root of a b that's equal to the product of the square root of a times the square root of b All right. now um, so in this case what I will do is to write this square root of 4 times 7 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 7 divide 
that by 2. And in this case, well, we are going to evaluate the perfect square root, which in this case is the square root of 4 equals 2, but the square root of 7 will simply remain the square root of 7. And that gets divided by 2. Well, the good thing is that the numbers negative 4 and 2 are divisible by 2, so we simplify this by negative 2 plus minus the square root of 7. All right, so u, so far we have the following. We have that u equals negative 2 plus or minus the root of 7. However, that is not yet our final answer because we did a substitution for u. Okay, so now I, what I'm going to do is go back, substitute for u, which is 4 to the x. All right, and when I do that, when we do that, well, um, we need to get x by itself. How do we get x by itself? Well, by getting rid of the exponential, we do that by doing the inverse of the exponential, which in this case, well, you could do a len, you could do also log base 4. However, in this case, I'm going to do ln. I'm going to do ln ln of this whole thing. So the x right here smacks down, right, smacks this down, and we get x ln of 4 equals ln of negative 2 plus minus the square root of 7. And to get x by itself, we divide both sides by ln of 4. So x equals ln of negative 2 plus minus square root of 7 divided by ln of 4. All right, so this is almost the final answer. We're, we're almost there. The thing is only one of these will be the answer. Notice, notice that this plus minus here will give rise to two different solutions. One negative and one positive. So I mean, we are going to take ln of negative two minus root of seven divided by ln of four. On the other hand, we're gonna have the one with the positive ln of negative 2 plus root of 7. I claim that one of the solutions will get crossed. Which one will get crossed? Well, I will show you. So how do we know which one to cross? Recall again that the domain of the logarithmic function excludes negative numbers. So for example, I'm going to use my calculator here and I'm going to evaluate, I will try to evaluate negative 2 minus square root of 7. I'm going to close parentheses, whoops, delete, go outside of the radical, close parentheses. So we have a negative number and then another negative number if you click enter here you should get an error and that's because it's uh, we end up with a negative number inside so in this case we can safely cross this one out however this one will be the actual solution this is the exact solution because in this case I'm going to evaluate um, I'm going to use this um, this guy and I'm going to divide by ln of 4 however I'm going to change this negative root of 7 to a plus root of 7 and boom I'm going to get a real number this time so in this case the approximate solution will be negative 0 0.3155 that is rounding to four decimal places, which is typical with this type of equations again. 
All right, let's move on to the next page to more examples. All right, so how we, do we solve an equation like this? So we have um, the sum of two logs. But hold on. I know what you're thinking. Okay, so maybe we basketball the three and then we put everything together into a single log. That sounds like a good plan. However, that is not going to work here. First of all, let's recall the property of logs. And let's see what do we uh, let's see what we do with it. So log base A of M. I know we wrote it a few pages ago. Let's write it again. Log base A of N equals log base A of the product between M and N. All right. In this case, notice we have A and A, which means that the base has to be the same in order for us to be able to combine the logs together. However, if you look at this, bases, they are not the same. However, notice this 9 and this 3 are in a way related to one another. So what I'm going to do is I will use the change of base formula. Okay, let me write down the change of base formula, which tells us that log base A of X equals log of X over of a new base. B actually, which could be log base 7, log base 2, a log base E, which is a length, log base 10, whatever base, right? That's a new base. In particular, we want to convert everything log base 3. So I'm going to write log base, um, log of uh, log, ba log base 3 of x over log base 3 of 9 plus 3 times log base 3 of x equals 14. Alright, so sounds like the comp looks like the equation got a little bit more complicated. Well, we're going to simplify uh, a lot of this. We're, again, like I mentioned here, these few examples are going to put everything together, everything we have learned throughout this chapter, and even, you know, like in the previous example, we use quadratic formula, which was from previous chapters. So I'm going to simplify this log base 3 of 9. So notice that the number 9 can be written as a power of 3. That's 3 squared. Plus 3 log base 3 of x equals 14. So in this case, log base 3 of the exponential base three, base 3 cancel each other and I get only the 2. So log base 3 of x over 2 plus 3 log base 3 of x equals 14. All right. So now we can combine terms together but in order to do that I'm going to clear these fractions by multiplying both sides by 2 so, in this case, when I distribute the 2, I'm going to distribute here, and then I'm going to distribute there. So, when I distribute here, I'm going to have 2 log base 3 divided by 2. Basically, they cancel. The 2's cancel, rather. Let's be specific about what cancels. And when I multiply 2 times 3, that's a 6. And 14 times 2, that's a 28. I'm going to continue up here. So now we may be able to combine these together before, I know what you're thinking, um, basketball, and then increase the power of this. So no, you don't want to do that. These are like terms. There is an invisible 1 multiplying here, if you can think about it like this. So 1 log base 3 of x plus 6 log base 3 of x, that's going to give us 7 log base 3 of x equals 28. And we're almost there. All we need to do here is to divide both sides by 7. And this is going to come out really, 
really nicely. So log base 3 of x equals 4 and to undo the logarithm we exponentiate both sides. Okay, so we can solve this log with exponential to get x equals 3 to the 4th which is 81. Final answer here, in this case no decimals so that's the only answer, it's an integer, no um, no decimals report here. Alright, letter E. Letter E, if you observe, uh, letter E is a little bit similar to that of letter D. The difference is that in letter D we were able to work with one of the terms and write everything in terms of a single base. However, if you observe the basis for the logarithms in the example E, they are not related at all. For example, I suppose in the previous example, nine was a we were able to write nine as a power of three, but in this case we cannot write seven as a power of six, or vice versa, six as a power of seven in a way that we get nice integers. So in this case we're going to use the um, change the base formula. And I'm going to use the ln version as opposed to um, the log, the other log base 3 and log base 3 or we could have used log base 10. So I'm going to use, I'm going to do ln of x divided by ln of 7 plus ln of x divided by ln of 6 equals to 1. Alright, so first of all we have denominators, we need to clear those denominators. How do we do that? By multiplying both sides by the LCD. The LCD between these three denominators which is the product of them, ln of 6 times ln of 7 ln of 6 times ln of 7. So when I multiply this I'm gonna have ln of 6 times ln of 7 oops, times ln of 7 ln of 6 times ln of 7 which multiplies ln of x over ln of 7. ln of x over ln of 6, that's a plus sign here, that should be there. Uh, let me erase. There's a plus sign that must be there. And that equals 1 times the product of these two, which is simply ln of 6 times ln of 7. Notice what's going to happen here. ln of 7 cancel, ln of 6 cancel and this will leave us with um, ln of 6 times ln of x plus ln of 7 times ln of x equals ln of 6 times ln of 7. Okay, what are we going to do now? So again, our main goal is to get x by itself so notice that we have this term right here having the excess. Notice both terms have the ln of x as a GCF. That's gonna we factor it out and we get ln of six plus ln of seven, which equals ln of six times ln of seven. Now we have an addition of logs in here. Ln of six plus ln of seven by the addition by the by the product rule to product to addition, we write the addition as a product ln of 6 times 7, which equals ln of 6 times ln of 7. Notice in this case, the product of two logarithms is not one log of the product. It is only the addition of two logarithms that, be, that can be written in terms of one single log of a product of its arguments. 
I'm gonna go up here, low ln of 60 of 6 times 7 is gonna be ln of x times ln of 42, which equals ln of 6 times ln of 7. So we need to isolate the ln of x, which is the term that contains the x by dividing both sides by ln of 42. So in this case, well, cancel these two guys right here. ln of x equals ln of 6 times ln of 7 divided by ln of 42. All right, so in order to get x by itself, we need to get rid of this ln. We, do, we undo the ln by exponentiating both sides by base e. So in this case, cancel, cancel, we get only the x and we get e to the ln of 6 times ln of 7 and then divide this by ln of 42. So this is our exact answer, our approximate answer using a graphing calculator you should get 2.5415. Final answer over here. All right. Let's do another example. Another very typical example here is uh, e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by 2 equals 3. So what are we going to do here? So first of all, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. To get e to the x plus e to the negative x equals to 6. All right. So that's our first move. And then what are we going to do here? Well, um, the trick here when you have an equation of this type is to multiply by e to the x. Okay, where where did I get that from? Okay, let me let me go back to basic algebra, and you might remember um, equations like this in intermediate algebra when you have one over x squared plus three over uh, I don't know three over x equals uh, five, for example. So we multiply both sides by the LCD. The least common denominator, well, in this case, involves the letter X. However, we multiply both sides by the highest power of each, by the highest power of all possible factors. So we multiply by X squared, distribute, we get X squared over X squared, this is one, X, X squared over X, that's X, so that's three X and five, x squared. So I'm going to move everything over here. I'm going to end up with the following equation. All right. I don't care about solving this equation. What I wanted to bring here is that we use the highest power of the factors in the denominator that forms the LCD. So we are some sort of doing the same. If you observe this e to the x and e to the negative x, so in this case we are multiplying both sides by the highest power, but well, what is the power here? If you compare x and negative x, negative x is smaller than x. x is bigger than negative x, so the largest power is e to the x. So that's why we do that, so let's distribute. So this will be e to the x times itself plus e to the x times e to the negative x equals 6 e to the x. So by the laws of exponents, we have the same base, e to the x plus x, we add the exponents. And here I can write this negative exponent, e to the negative x, in the denominator with positive exponent. All right, so over here, notice how we can divide these two out. This divides out to 1, and we can add these exponents to e to the 2x. 
which equals 6 e to the x. All right, so I'm going to have all terms on one side of the equation, e to the 2x. I'm going to subtract uh, this term. I'm going to do the, the silly trick we did earlier. So e to the x quantity squared minus 6e to the x plus 1 equals to 0. So in this case, I'm going to call for the u substitution to be e to the x. So that's going to be our u substitution. And I'm going to have u squared minus 6u plus 1 equals to 0. And if we try to solve this equation for u, oh, well, I should have used green in this case, not blue. Uh, well, factors of 1 that add up to negative 6, there's none of them. So use the quadratic formula again, minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right. So minus negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times c which is also 1 divided by 2 times 1 so apply the smile rule here So that's going to be 36 minus 4 over 2. So 36 minus 4 is 32. The good news here, we can simplify this 32 because one of the factors of 32 is a perfect square. In particular, that's a 16 times 2. And I'm going to use the same law of radicals or the same property of radicals I use. The radical of a product is the product of two radicals 16 and 2. So the square root of 16, which is 4 times simply the square root of 2. And then divide, both, divide everything by 2. Just like the other example we did was a similar equation. Both the number 6 and the 4 are divisible by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. Square root of 2. So what are we going to have? U equals 3 plus minus the square root minus 2 root of 2. Oops. So at this point, what we're going to do is back substitute, oh, not 3, actually e, e to the u equals 3 plus minus 2 root of 2. So we need to take ln of both sides. It's not u, by the way. Uh, let me raise this whole thing right here. This e looks kind of wacky and e to the x. So we need to take ln to both sides to get this solved. This ln will cover everything here. And notice how ln and e cancel each other to get x equals ln of 3 plus or minus 2 root of 2. And again, notice this plus or minus sign is going to give rise again to two solutions. One negative inside of the log, of the natural log, and one positive.
let's find out whether the first one is going to give us a real number. So I believe it's going to be an error because 3 minus 2 root of 2, okay, we'll find out. So ln of 3 minus 2 root of 2. Close parentheses. Oh, yes, it's going to give us an actual number. So that's going to be negative 1.7627. So that's one solution. And the other solution, I'm going to have this same thing here, but with a positive in this case. Oh, same, but positive. 1.7627. So two solutions in this case, as opposed to the other example. Let me go back and show it to you to notice how the example on, at the bottom of page four, uh, when we break it up, we, when we broke it up into the minus and the plus, it turned out that the one with the negative in between these two terms inside of the argument tur turned out a negative number, which was a non-defined. So that was an extraneous solution. All right, so let's move on to the last page, uh, to more elaborated, even weird looking logarithmic equation. So we're going to have ln of x raised to itself equals 9. So what are we going to do? How are we going to solve this equation? We have variable raised to another variable. Holy. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. This ln. I'm going to make it smack down and multiply it with itself. So ln of x that multiplies this ln of x equals 9. When we have the same quantity multiplying, we can say ln of x, for example, squared equals 9. All right. So what we could do here is to take the square root on both sides. But you know what happens to the right hand side, be sure to have a plus or minus. So in this case, the square cancels with the radical and we are left with ln x, which equals plus or minus the square root of 9, which is plus or minus 3. To get x by itself, all we need to do is exponentiate both sides base e. Cancel, cancel. We get x equals e to the negative or e to the plus minus 3 which we is, it's going to give us e to the negative 3 and e to the positive 3 e cubed. All right, so that's going to be the solution. Approximate solution. Well, let's see. Second e to the negative 3 that's uh, 0 0.04, 0 0.0498. And the same quantity here, just get rid of the negative sign. E cubed is going to be a big number, 20.0855. So two solutions, one negative, one positive. That's the solution set. Log base 5 of x squared equals log base 5 of x, the whole thing squared. Be careful because uh, in this case, okay, uh, let, let me let me do it on a separate piece of, let me do this on a separate piece of paper. So when we have um, L, some log, of x to the m equals log of x, but the whole thing, the whole thing actually being raised to the m power. On the right hand side, we are supposed to use the smackdown rule, and that's going to give us m 
log x. But in this case, log um, to the m times, well, let me actually put a number because otherwise it's going to become a disaster. Let me put a, a 3, for example, 3. So in this case, this by, by the SmackDown rule L x, log x, but only the x cubed become, makes this 3 times log x, which is the same as log of x plus log of x plus log of x. All right? Do we agree that this 3 log of x is the same as breaking it up into the sum of its of the 3 of them? And in this case, this means uh, this means log of x times log of x times log of x, which is not the same multiplying a quantity itself n times, in this case three times, then adding it the same time. So be careful here. So in this case, what are we going to do? So here we are just going to use the SmackDown rule, boom, 2 log base 5 of x equals I'm going to simply call this, um, I will just use, uh, what did I use in my notes? Yep, I'm going to use simply log base 5 of x quantity squared. So in this case I'm going to do another u substitution here. I'm going to call for u equals log base 5 of x. This will turn this equation into 2u equals u squared. I'm going to move this to the other side. It's going to become u squared minus 2u equals to 0. I'm going to solve this by factoring. In this case, GCF All right. on the one hand u equals to 0 and u equals to 2. So now we need to go back to our u substitution and substitute u with log base 5 of x and equals to 0 and log base 5 of x equals the 2. So we need to get rid of these logarithmic symbols, logarithmic operators we do by exponentiating both sides the, with the same base. So in this case exponentiating base 5, exponentiating base 5, so we get x equals 5 to the 0 power which is 1 and x equals 5 to the second power which is 25. In the last example square root of ln x equals to ln of square root of 5. Interesting equation here because we have radicals, more radicals, and well, I'm going to simplify the right hand side of the equation by using the basketball rule. Alright, so using the basketball rule I'm going to get so square root of ln x equals um, ln of the square root of 5 quantity squared. And what's going to happen here? The radical will get cancelled with the power and that's going to give me um, the square root of ln x equals to ln of 5. Now our variable is inside of a natural log which at the same time is inside of a radical so we need to get rid of that radical by squaring both sides. Right? Squaring both sides. So what are we going to get in here? So Let's see, uh, what was my color? All right here, squaring, 
and squaring. So we can cancel this square with this radical and that's going to give us ln of x equals ln of 5 quantity squared. Okay. So the final step here in order to get x by itself is to exponentiate both sides. Okay, exponentiate both sides. And with that's going to give us x by itself and e to the ln of 5 quantity squared. Now I'm going to use the calculator to evaluate this quantity, this expression. So I'm going to write e, second e, raised to the open parenthesis ln of 5 close the parenthesis for the argument, close the parenthesis for the entire um, exponent and square that. Hit enter. I get 13, approximately 13.3336. Final answer. And this is a good place to quit. This is this was exponential and logarithmic equations. See you on the next video.